Hi, Ed Xavier, and welcome to my bonsai retreat. And I had to think long and hard about which trees I would put in to this, uh, this slate and lava concoction or creation. I had loads of ideas from people, and first of all, a big shout out to Dave of Blue Sky Bonsai, who did suggest to me that I ought to put the slab up on an angle and try and create an angle planting. Now, I looked at that, and it seemed a great idea but then I realized that the rock formations and the way I had them glued in was wrong. It also is a massively heavy slab and I couldn't find a way of making it look natural in that way. So I thought, yeah, it was a great idea. Next time, that's what I'll think about um, because I think that would look fantastic on an angle. What I did do, I was looking through and the overwhelming votes were on larch. I think 75% of the people who commented said larch and I put together five larches up there and I was ready to go for it. And uh, the second option, I think in the end, was going to be um, uh, Courtney Aster, because I've got a load of Courtney Aster that have come from cuttings over the last few years. And I thought, larch up the top end, the Courtney Aster there. And all ready to go. And then out of the blue, someone came up with an idea. Yeah, it was a comment from Andrew Miles, and uh, literally read it this morning. And he suggested my maples. I said so the, the colour with the reds, and then how they would go in the autumn would just contrast the, the greys and, and dark colours of the slate and lava. And I thought, yeah. And what really sold it to me in the end though was that I literally had to do a complete um, revamp and look at all those maples that I bought back in 2014 as little one-year-old seedlings. They're nine, ten years old and, well, you'll see in another video what I've um, decided to do with them all. But uh, along the way, I plucked out a few. I've got some here. They're going to put in there. And then on top of that, I've got a couple of um, air layers that I took three years ago. And these are going to go in up the top. So I'm going to sort that out and get that ready. Now clearly, there's going to be lots of holes going all the way around this where soil will come out the lava, will come out between the lava. I'll be setting it, making up some mix for that in a minute. What I want to first of all do is just get the initial soil into the planting spot so I can set the trees up. This is actually quite exciting. It's different from making a forest so I normally do. I'm finding that this is much more interesting. So I've got a short one, two tall ones, which I'm going to have like that and my aim is is that the roots will all knit in together eventually so I can take it out as one big piece we've got a slightly slightly Now you all know by watching me do um, forest creations that there isn't a great deal of planning that goes in. It's sort of pushing, dobbing and just seeing how they look. I'm looking for something like that because I want to have a little centre bit there because in there I'm going to put an animal, I'm sure of it. So put some soil in. And the first bonus is all the rocks have held so far. So I'm going to tamp that down, secure across with my wires, and I'll use some um, clear tubing as well just to give a bit more push down, so to speak. Okay, well, I've done a, a different sort of securing method. I've got the, the five trees in that I want there, and I was trying to work out how I could do it. And I know there, the other way to do it is use bits of um, bamboo, which you lay across, but I thought, I'll use a little bit of the green meshing uh, and I'll attach the wire to either end just to hold it down. And to be fair, the nice thing about that is that give this a year where it's growing in, I can then very easily release that and uh, soon those wires can go. So that's how I've set that up for now. I always find it difficult when you put in just sort of four or five trees. I'm going to start off with just those and then I'm going to get the ones ready for that. So I just need to put a bit more soil over the top. Now 
Now, as I said, I have got very organic actually. I've got quite a few bits of old roots in here. I think I'm using recycled soil here. Anyway, I'll continue to push these in and uh, don't worry about the stuff falling out. We'll come back to that in a minute. Next thing is the air layers. They're going to be the two trees on the other side. And then that will make up seven trees in the whole planting. So I'll get these out now, but they're already starting to leaf out. It's not a big issue, but I probably won't go that nuts on the roots because there's a lot of space in there. So I'm just gonna clip back a few bits and pieces that I don't want. Get the rocks off. And very carefully, as I say, they, they were air layers. I can't remember what the roots are like on these. So just be a little bit careful with it. Oh, there's definitely a nice layer of roots there. Very nice, very, very happy. I'm just gonna trim those back a bit so they're suitable and ready for the planting. But gosh, I think very, very delicate. Probably quite nice in their own right, to be honest. Okay, so I've got the two of them ready. They're gonna get put in that corner. But do you know what? Before we do that, why don't we have our first look at subscribers' picks for 2024. Hopefully you've enjoyed seeing the uh, pictures and thanks very much for those who sent them in. If you do want to send some in yourself, remember the address, expressionsbonsai at gmail.com and I'll probably have another set going up in another sort of four to six weeks time. Do you want to see what I did with the two more trees while you were watching those? It's not exactly right, but this is where we are now. And straight away I know there'll be some of you saying this big ugly bit here, well as soon as that, uh, that heals up, in another sort of five, six months, I'll chomp that down just a little bit lower. But, you know, I'm determined that I'm going to use those air layers, so they may not be perfect right now, but I like all this. All of this is from homegrown material, basically, so absolutely fantastic. So, in fact, the only thing this has cost me is, I think it's probably about £4 for the glue. Okay, well, I'm going to continue to put... Uh, the rest of the wire. I've done the same thing in terms of attaching this. I've got a bit of mesh on top, wire over the top. So I'm just going to put some more soil on there uh, and bed that in. And then we need to move to the next stage, which is actually plugging up some of these areas with some um, muck, which will be basically um, some fine sphagnum moss ground in with some acadama dust. And then I suppose we better find some moss as well. And maybe we need a few plantings, some little um, some little thingies that make it look like a forest. It's looking pretty good, I think. Okay, well I said I was gonna mix up some muck for this, but do you know what I've realized is actually the way the lava rock holds together and the gaps, I can actually plug it quite happily with just some garden moss. And uh, where did I find that garden moss? Well, funny you should ask, but right now I'm sure there's a little montage coming of me plucking moss from the gaps in my mat just outside my front door. Well, first of all, I'm just going to clear away any of the, the rock that's there. There's a little gap there. 
So what I'll do is I'm going to plug it a little bit of rock with a little bit of moss. And I'm just going to work my way around with these little crevices. There we go. In fact, there's a nice crevice there, so I'm going to push that in there. Including all my major crevices, including in between my toes and in my belly button. And work my way around doing exactly this. And I think when I originally had this idea of using the lava rock, it was because I'm less confident about making my cup. I still haven't actually made it up yet, but I have got a project in mind for that. So I'm just going to continue to work my way around with my moss and see how this works out. And ideally what's going to happen is over time that moss is going to spread around the skirts of the rock and parts of the slate and it'll become more and more natural as time goes by. And that's got to be good, surely. Anyway, I'm going to keep working my way around and I'll come back to you when it's done. Okay, well I've had a bit of fun poking the moss in and out of different places. I'm actually in two minds now about the front actually, although it is about to rain again, so bonsai stopping again for the day. But there you go, so it's all packed around in all the little gaps and holes and hollows. And again, I think the green now with the different colours, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to think whether this could be the front. Um, but uh, I love this slate and oh, I, can't, I can't help it, I'm so over the moon with how this is working out. And I think, imagine when the leaves are coming out, it's going to look awesome. Definitely something to, uh, to keep in your diet when I do my uh, spring tour of the garden, which is also when I'll show off all the benches that were sponsored. So that's the moss there. But you know what? I was wondering whether we could have something hanging down over here. And I was trying to think of a, a, a miniature sort of plans. I had a few ideas sent to me, but I couldn't find them. And I do apologise now, there'll be a name coming up because this is who gave me this idea, so thank you very much. But I went around the local nursery and what I did find is Thymus, is it Praycox? But it's got lovely, lovely small leaves. So I'm going to put some of these, just, just a few, in a couple of areas, probably so it overhangs. And if I keep it trimmed, it may look quite good. So let me get some of this out, put it in and then uh, see what you think. Now it goes without saying that all you who have watched me before and know me know that one, I love Orkney Rock and two, I like to have my little plastic animals to try and create some interest because certainly the bonds I never do. Finally the truth. No, seriously, so I am going to make up two little animal plantings and I'm going to have some horned moose or elk on this and I'm going to have my brown bear on this. And I think my brown bear are going to be on the upper portion and my moose will be on the lower portion. All I'm going to use is some Modeler's plastic glue. We used it before, normally it keeps the, uh, the animals on for a, a year or two. But I will be getting some liquid nails or no more nails next time. The only trouble I find with it is it sets an odd colour. Um, I don't know, certainly I could sprinkle dust on it. So anyway. Let me get these done and uh, that'll finish off this incredible lava and slate rock planting, hopefully to everybody's satisfaction. It's done and uh, I'm very, very happy with it. This is the front I'm going with. Obviously I've got the stuff draping over it. I've even got my little brown bear sitting there in the middle. Goodness knows how they climbed up there, but I just can't wait to see it when the maple leaves are coming out. What do you reckon? Thumbs up, thumbs down. I'll tell you what, if you like the construction of this, then please, please give me a big like. And if you think uh, anyone else would enjoy this or would, would benefit from seeing the fun I've had with this, then by all means share it. And, uh, and of course, if you haven't subscribed, you want to see more of this incredibly varied content, if not necessarily the most technically correct, but at least as a hobbyist, I'm still enjoying it. And hopefully you are then subscribe and uh, as I said before if you want to see what this looks like when we've got the lovely yellows and red leaves coming out in another sort of four or five weeks time from a spring update then you definitely definitely need to hit notifications and get the old ding ding bell but uh, there was the other option for front that's where I started from because I love the crop at the bottom but to be fair I much much prefer I do like the way these 
come down and of course because they're small leaves you can just keep clipping them so that's where I'm going for my my front uh, I can't say I've had a ball with this and I'm so glad I started it and I encourage you it's amazing what you can do what you can find around your own gardens that you can construct without having to go into any technical drilling holes and trying to find different ways of supporting trees it's all here for you so from Xavier all the best, happy bonsai and God bless. Cheers.